people behave very oddly when they try things on. <laughs> they put dresses on and trousers. You walk in a way you'll never actually walk <laughs> once you've purchased the trousers. She walks into the change room like a normal human being holding the trousers. Then she comes out doing this really, what do you think? I think I'm trousers. I think they're quite nice. Mm. What are you doing? I'm seeing if they fit. But you don't need to be doing that in trousers. Men do the same thing. When I put a suit on, there's this whole suit thing that you do. Oh. What do you think of this suit? I think it's pretty good. No one's ever done this when they own the suit. But when they're trying it on, there's a huge preparation for acting like a complete freak in a suit. You wouldn't go to a business meeting going, hello, my name's you. Sort of new suit and trousers. The main one is his shoes. When you try shoes on, you will go for a walk in the shoe shop. But it's not a walk you'll ever do anywhere else outside of the shoe shop. It's a shoe shop walk. You walk around in this sort of... I can't like these shoes. I don't think they'll rub. I'm just going to bang it for a bit. I think they're quite comfortable. They'll be perfect for my Elvis impersonation. I like them. Let me just push them with my thumb for no reason at all. The toe is in the toe section. That's ideal. All the other toes are there. If the toe was at the back, I wouldn't buy them. That'd be bizarre. The sides are filled with the sides of my feet. Perfect. Everything I wanted happened when I went down there. And I think I might definitely get this. They even have little mirrors where you can put your shoe under and look at the shoe from a slightly different angle. Oh, look, there's the shoe from that angle. The cat will love them. That's probably what the cat will see. <laughs> they even give you one shoe. These lazy people who work in shoe shops, they bring out the shoes, they lace up one and hand you the one. And do we say, uh, excuse me, people in life wear two shoes? You're wearing two shoes now? Oh, no, we don't. We take the one shoe, we go for a walk in that. <laughs> this is good. I love this shoe. Give me two of these. <laughs> Why would you walk around the shoe shop in one shoe? There's no moment in your life that we would ever be recreating this moment. One of keys phone. I'm late. One shoe. I've got to go to a meeting. <laughs> it's not just clothes that you try. Everything. You buy a sofa, you start bouncing on it and rubbing the fabric. No, you nobody know sits like this at home. People don't come round to your house. Do take a seat. <laughs> I tried a bed, and you lie in the bed. Not how you'd normally sleep, just like this. <laughs> Next to my wife, I go, I like this bed. Do you like the bed? Oh, I love it. It's a really good bed. Will we be using it as a coffin? Evidently, we will, darling. <laughs> I bought a Hoover from Comet. They love electricals. They all, everything they sell is electric, which means they have to plug it in. But nothing in the shop is plugged in. And the whole shop is filled with people trying things out, but not for their primary function. They're just looking at fridges by opening them and closing them. <laughs> no one asks whether it, it actually makes food colder. Look at this one, it opens like that and closes. I like it when it's silver. <laughs> Look at this oven, it opens, it's got trays and tiles! I love trays and tiles! Does it heat food? I don't give a shit. It's not tiles, it's the trains. I was trying a Hoover, and I felt the need to Hoover around the shop a bit, just to feel the weight of the Hoover. It wasn't plugged in, I just took it for a little spin. <laughs> and as I was hoovering down the aisle, somebody else was trying their Hoover, and Hoovered past me. Hello, good Hoover. I used to have that in my room. Because <laughs> there's two very distinctive styles of Hoovering. Either you walk with your Hoover, like this. Then you get to the end and you hoover around and you follow in behind. <laughs> or you stand your ground and hoover out. <laughs> and you just pick another spot at random. Hoover out again! <laughs> if you can't get into a nook, the hose will come out. 
It's exciting when you think, I will utilize the hose now. You stand up, we'll take the hose out. Ooh. Before you hoover with the hose, for some reason you feel the excitement building. You have to hoover yourself. I don't really know why. You know what it'll feel like. You know that it's a suction device. You just feel the need to confirm it. Ooh. 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 My wife shops at Waitrose. People who shop at Waitrose just love shopping at Waitrose. They're like, people are whooping, Waitrose. What a moment to reveal just how middle class you are. The middle classes dig Waitrose. They love telling people about it because they're basically saying they can afford it. I shop at Waitrose. They just drop it into conversation. I've got to stop off at Waitrose. So I'll see you later. I'm going to go to Waitrose. Just so you all know I can afford Waitrose. Because they sell all the same stuff as other supermarkets. They just charge you more money for it and people enjoy going there. There are no deals, that's what frustrates me. Every other supermarket has deals, like buy one, get one free, exists in every other supermarket, but not in Waitrose. In Waitrose, it's buy one, and you're perfectly welcome to buy another one, but it will cost you the same as the first one. <laughs> it's about ten times more than any other supermarket. Do come in. Don't mind if I do! Waitrose! I can it! I've never seen anybody in the Waitrose car park return the trolley for the pound. It's simply not worth it to them. <laughs> they unload the bags into the back of the Range Rover. They think about it, they try to get the pound. Oh no, the pint, it's stuck, it's stuck. I've got to go all the way over there to the trolley train for a pint. Well, that's not exactly worth it after I've spent all this on my shopping. <laughs> and then they do this sort of push away. They just go, fuck off. <laughs> it's the way it goes, pass push. <laughs> fuck off. And the trolley sort of rolls away and then careers into another Range Rover for another posh person. What the fuck off is that doing there? <laughs> There's normally someone from Aldi in the bushes. I'll have that. <laughs> Get my week shopping done on that quid, you idiot. It's all the same shit you just bought, darling. Half the price. Argos is the weirdest shop on earth. Argos is the shop that said, we think shops should be like this. And all other shops went, no. <laughs> No, we're going to stick with the putting the stuff we have in the shop and then they pick it, then they pay. And I'll go, no, people don't want a shop like that. They want a big book of shopping. <laughs> you need to be in pretty good physical condition to get to the index of the book, don't you? You'll see people sort of limbering up going, Whoa! Then when you find what you want, but then you have to do your own little stock check. Well, I didn't know I had to do my own stock check here. <laughs> then you write it down, you pay money, you get a new piece of paper, you still don't even have what you paid for. <laughs> then you go to probably the most depressing area in life. <laughs> Literally. It's like bingo, but you win what you've already paid for. <laughs> there are rows of seating. You feel like... It's like a theatre for the poor. I've never seen anything quite so dramatic. I don't like designer labels. That's a nonsense. People wear designer clothes to say, look at me, I can afford this. Look, I've got a little crocodile. You don't have that, do you? <laughs> I've noticed you have no reptiles on your clothing. <laughs> I have a little crocodile. Sometimes I have a little man playing polo, because I can afford that little man. <laughs> Sometimes, because I'm loaded, the crocodile plays polo, yes. <laughs> I think it's a nonsense. I think people should just wear T-shirts with a photocopy on the front of a recent bank statement. That would sort things out, wouldn't it? <laughs> There's people going, look at that, three grand, not to mention my savings. <laughs> I'm a comedian. I make jokes. And when I see people in real life, sometimes I make a joke. And, you know, I like those moments, because they go, oh, that's funny. Oh, you like, you're funny. You're funny in real life. <laughs> I made a joke in the airport, and I thought it was funny. And this woman, she just tutted and rolled her eyes at me. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't funny. I'm going to run it by you. <laughs> Free. You know, in duty free, it's always very weird because they ask for your boarding pass, which is always an odd situation when you're paying for something. You know, you want to, you're in the shop, and you, and you go, can I get this? And they go, can I see a boarding pass, please? You have to prove that you're flying on an aeroplane, even though you're in an airport. <laughs> you have to go, yes, I am flying on an aeroplane. It's a very, I don't know what they're suggesting, that, you know, <laughs> what's the accusation here? That I've driven to Gatwick Terminal North. <laughs> I've parked in the long-stay car park. I've taken a shuttle bus to the terminal. 
then I've breached the most stringent security measures there's ever been without a ticket to fly, <laughs> just so I can visit this pret a manger. Is that really what you think I've done? <laughs> Do you have any idea how many pret a mangers I drove past to get to this one? <laughs> no, no, not that one. I like the one at Gatwick. <laughs> So anyway, I'm in this shop, and I thought I'd buy my son a little present, the token of being away, you know, gesture. So I'm in duty free, and I got him this uh, little plane, just a little toy plane, you know, little cheap rubbish, but you know. I put it on the counter, and the woman said, um, can I see a boarding pass? And I said, I'm not getting on it. Now, that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> but it's not a tut and an eye roll, is it? <laughs> oh, well, you're my people.